Hi there, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I've got something really exciting for you today. This is the most famous string sound in the world. It will be cemented in your subconscious with the sound of the Beatles hit Eleanor Rigby, but also other 60s classics that were recorded in Abbey Road Studio 2. This is a really unique one-of-a-kind library. We haven't just used some vintage gear or tried to get a vintage sound for the vintage path of this library. We have used the same equipment that was used in the 60s to record this incredible string sound. But we also have modern parts as well, so you get the best of both worlds. Let's dive straight in, and as we move through the library, I'll tell you a little bit more about the different elements that make it up. So we've got a huge amount of short articulations in the library, all recorded in great depth and with huge detail. And as you can see, you even have access to different bowing patterns as well. Now let's check out that sound. At the moment we're listening to mix one, which is a clear modern sounding mix, but I'm gonna to switch to the first vintage mix so you can check out what that sounds like. So this mix is passing through Abbey Road's vintage red desk with parallel compression from the RS-124, all going through the J37 tape machine. This is the exact same signal path used in the Eleanor Rigby recordings. So that's the wonderful sound of the long Sultasto. And I've got an ensemble patch up here, but let me show you how this is working, because this is really rather clever. We have an arranger, which is to help you when you're kind of busking in ideas, to split out the voices and make an arrangement for you as you're playing. As you can see, each instrument can be set according to the range that you want it to play in, but also, we have a multi-voice mode. So if you want all of the instruments to play everything you play on the keyboard, you can switch this on. And as you'll see, the UI changes and it gives you the ability to specify the start and end notes of each range, but also to arrange how they come in over a certain smaller range. So between C1 and F sharp one, for example, here on the cello, that's where this instrument starts to come in and increases in volume as you get up towards the F1. And as you can see, it's incredibly easy to change that. But what does that sound like? Well, let's have a listen. And of course, we can switch back to mix one so that we're listening to the uh, more modern clear mix. Let's put our normal long notes on and have a listen. Very beautiful. And going back to multi-voice off, which gives us our uh, arranger. A really beautiful sound and incredibly fun to play. 
Let's have a listen to some legato. I've picked the viola. It's often a neglected instrument, but it just sounds really soulful and beautiful. All of the instruments are incredibly agile. Let's compare the violin one with the violin two section now. Absolutely beautifully intense, crisp, and in your face. Now, what you're hearing there is the performance legato. Now in the core library, you have the full functionality of the performance legato with the exception of those last portamento slides, which I was demonstrating there. Those are in the pro library. In the core library, also mix-wise, you have the main mix one and you have that vintage mix one. But in the pro library, there are a large number of other mixes, and I'm gonna show you a couple of those now. Now, while mix one is formed around the close condensers and LCR one, which is a kind of, uh, like a Decca tree that is kind of closer to the players, but it's made of those M50s. Mix two is based around the ribbon mics and LCR two, which are the fabulous new Abbey Road red mics. Check this out. Actually, if we go back to the arranger and choose the spiccato ensemble, it's a very easy, clear way to hear the difference in the room sound and how close it feels to the strings. So let's just check these out in turn. Vintage 2 has a little bit of that classic ADT sound applied that's used in lots and lots of 60s tracks to give you a little bit of extra thickness. So LCR1 is our M50s, um, and again, this is like the kind of tree of this arrangement. And LCR2 made of those amazing new red mics. Now we're isolating the close mics, and that's that tight, crisp, modern sound of those great condenser mics. There you get the beautiful, warm, rounded sound of those close ribbon mics. Here we have that classic vintage sound. This is the sound that you will have in your mind's eye of this era of music and these arrangements. Um, with these ones, we have the KM54s on the violin ones, twos and violas, and U47s on the cellos and basses. Hand-picked specific serial numbers from Mirick and Sam here from the Abbey Road collection, and they're just beautiful sounding mics. Let's move on to the stereo ribbon. This is the Royer SF24, an XY arrangement. So those are our stereo mids, which are a pair of Sherps MK21s in ORTF formation. And last but not least are the ambient mics. And that's a pair of Sherps 2H at the back wall in a spaced Omni formation. So you can combine these mics in a really fantastic way to get a, the feel of the, of the space that you're recording in if you want that extra bit of width. And I'll show you how to do that now. So here I'm using mainly these fantastic close vintage mics, but also I've dialed in the ambience to get that kind of extra distance to the back wall of the studio. And that sounds like this. 
And if you alter that balance and uh, make it in favor of the distant mics, And so here you can see that we're changing the kind of focus. Now, if we go back to our uh, violin one and using that same mix, I'll show you some of the different long articulations in the library. There's this wonderful scratchy sol pont. And this is where you can start to see we're coming into this kind of sound world as well of the kind of Nicholas Brattel, the Johnny Greenwood, of using these sounds to paint a, a kind of beautiful and undulating um, soundscape around yourself. And we can actually get even more distance into the sounds. I'll show you how to do that. I'm not going to use any close mics at all. I'm going to put up the LCR and leave the ambience all the way up. So, and I'm using LCR2, which is the red mics, and that gives us this fabulous, uh, beautiful, warm sound. Isn't that fabulous? And I'm, re I'm just using the violin one. So obviously you build your arrangement, you use the individual instruments and you just get such a great sound. Fabulous harmonics. And then we have the usual things, the trills. And we can use those to build up some great, lovely chord textures. But we've got our tremolos. And the measured trems, um, which will adapt to your tempo. So here my tempo is set to 120, but if I dial that up, You can see that incredibly smoothly, you can do tempo ramps and all kinds of things in your sequence. It just follows the tempo absolutely beautifully. For the really faster tempos, we've got a 180 performance. And again, that follows your tempo. And then finally, we have our long flautando. Now, if I go back to the mic mixer, and we change the focus of our sound and I want to have a little bit of that lovely warm stereo ribbon, but the majority of the sound, the close ribbons and check out this. And it's absolutely beautiful. The players in this library are incredible. First call session players in London. Um, they, they play absolutely beautifully. Um, let's go back to the uh, long ensemble and using that same mix, let's have a listen to that long flautando, but with the arranger splitting what I'm playing into the different instruments. Absolutely wonderful. And then uh, just to give you a quick example of our tremolo, and we'll go back to mix one to get that really fantastic bright sound. And with the uh, major second trill, Hugely dynamic, um, but also it's really fantastic getting that uh, separation. And of course, we can go back and put on the multi voice, and that would make it sound like this.
which gives you that wonderful feel of a kind of chamber ensemble. It's just, it's almost like two libraries in one. If we look up here, you'll see that we've got some fantastic reverbs included in here, which were recorded from Studio 2's beautiful plate collection. So we can use a much longer plate reverb. And you can dial up the amount of reverb you use here. Let's have a listen to Vintage Mix 1, and I'm going to play the cello long flautando. Giving it plenty of that lovely splosh, it sounds like this. Absolutely wonderful. And even putting that in a lovely, lovely big plate sounds like this. So what about these live patches? Well, these are great for when you want to just jam on that instrument and you want to be able to play short notes and long notes and not worry about anything else. And that sounds like this. So you can hear there we've got different attacks as well on that live patch. And if we go back to the cello, we'll be able to see here Super easy to use. So just to do one more comparison of the two different main mixes, Mix 1 and Vintage Mix 1, using the bass here. And checking out the uh, fantastic pizzicatos. with mix one. Now it's really great as composers to have access to this vast palette of different sound colors. And using this exact same equipment that was used on these fantastic 60s hit records, you know, it's we often go for a kind of color. We're looking for some different kind of vibe on the sound, but this isn't trying to simulate the, that different vibe. This actually is that equipment that we so often try to reproduce the color of. And it's really great to have the recordings made through this equipment, as well as through the more modern mics and the different kind of, you know, maybe cleaner equipment as well so that you've got that choice you can choose to go for the really vibey sound or you can choose to go for a very clean and maybe more austere sound according to the the type of thing that you're writing and we've really enjoyed working with grammy award winning engineer sam o'kell on this library and check out what he's been up to over the last few years online and you'll see why he's the obvious choice to make this library as I mentioned, this library is fabulous for busking things in. If you're just trying to get some chords down on something, you can use the arranger to just sort out what instrument plays what, or you can uh, have all of the voices playing in multi-voice mode so that you get a kind of chamber ensemble sound. But it's also fabulous for sketching out these beautiful kind of film soundscapes and getting a, a real kind of character and a, you know you can hear the rosin on the bows. It's just so exciting to use, and I really hope that you're going to enjoy using this one a lot. 
I really hope that you get as much enjoyment out of this as I have been over the last few months. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.